Hello and welcome back to On The Workbench today. This is part two of my 2020 toolbox tour. If you want to find part one, check the upper right hand corner. You should be able to see a little card up there and I'll put a link below. Click those to check out part one. But now let's jump into part two of the toolbox tour. And so now getting into the box. So the exciting drawer, we'll save that for the end of what's in the very top drawer and what's in the top drawer on the side. But looking at this, what we've got here is we've got two parts. We've got my, it's either 56 or 54 inch uh, Master Force toolbox on the right. And then on the left was one of the side cabinets they sold. I know some folks are gonna ask where, uh, why I can't find the red ones anymore. When Master Force changed their lineup to make everything the deep size, they got rid of the red, the red color and added their gunmetal color. Don't ask me why. They did it, but these boxes have been great. Uh, my only complaint is I wish I would have gotten a slightly larger top box that had wider drawers on it than what I did. Uh, I think that would have made life just a little bit easier for trying to keep myself organized. But that's what I bought, so I'm happy to stick with it. I'm not going to make any changes in that anytime soon. So let's start over here on the side cabinet. At the top up here is where I've got my three quarter inch drive sockets. I've got these in standard and metric. See, here's a metric 29. You know, I don't break these out very often that I need to get out three quarter drive. But the one thing I think is interesting is trying to find three quarter inch drive metric sockets. For some reason, the, that is just a difficult find. If you've got a good source for those, let me know, especially that are budget friendly. But I've got a full set of those. And then I also have my SK axle nut set uh, that are impact rated up there. So I know some of these three quarter drive ones here easily could be cup holders here or you could probably weld them shut and turn it into a coffee mug it might be kind of fun for a project someday we'll close that up next drawer down this is cutting tools so in here i've got a pair of scissors i've got some other utility knives folding utility knife this is kind of a fun one here the belt clip looks like a wrench this is made in japan this is a Craftsman. I forget who the actual manufacturer is on this Craftsman. I've got a tile saw in the back, a little stapler, pencil sharpeners, uh, extra knife blades. Can't have too many of those. And then I've got this folding saw here. This one is by Milwaukee. This takes a recip saw blade and turns it into a hand saw. I've got my other Milwaukee uh, sliding knife. This one is nice that the extra blades get stored in here. Well, I got a couple left there, so you can always have a sharp blade at, uh, at ease. I've got a small little square buried under there. These Milwaukee scissors. Have to keep those lubricated because other, otherwise I think they get a little stiff at the pivot point. So a drop of oil here or there makes all the difference. And then another thing that I found useful are these plastic razor blades. If you've ever tried to get a car dealer emblem off of a car or you need to scrape some other gunk off of a painted surface, these plastic razor blades are great. Uh, Menard sells those. I'm sure there's other places you can get them. They're not very expensive, but those are a extra secret weapon for just cleaning off gunk. A little bit of double-sided tape. Scrapers. I wish there was a higher quality scraping tool like this that wasn't made of plastic. I've tried and found a few other alternatives. I've not been happy with any of those. All right, so moving down to the next drawer. These are more cutting tools here. So I've got, here's a one size scraper the painter's multi-tool between the blade and the different curves comes in handy every now and then. Sharpening stone. Here's what I was talking about. I've got one of those plastic razor blades and this adapter that you drop into a bit holding screwdriver. And then you can use that again with a scraping razor. Set of chisels. I've got my hand plane, the stiff scraper. And then I've got this resharpenable gasket scraper here. I believe this is an old Western I thought it was Western Forge, maybe not looking at the Craftsman branding on it. But still, that's been fine. I can been able to resharpen that one a few times. Gets plenty of use. Uh, works well. Very happy with that. Moving on to the next drawer. So here we got hooks, pullers. So here's a set of wiper pullers, uh, wiper blade pullers, uh, picks, chisels. And this is where I keep my, my sockets that I use to destroy or beat on things or press things with. I've got a few other files. I love these old Craftsman files that have an actual proper handle on them. 
I don't understand why it's so easy to find files without handles. That, I don't know, I mean, maybe I'm weird, but I really like my files with handles on them. And then I've got this diamond impregnated knife sharpener. This is another weird old Sears Craftsman product that's kind of like what you'd find in the kitchen for sharpening steak knives. And then I've got a few other uh, oddball snap-on tools here. Here's one for removing Christmas tree clips. And then hose removers, these have that blunted end on them. So they're not going to try to pierce your hoses. A few other pry bars. Here's a small pry bar, larger pry bar, indexing pry bar. Battery terminal cleaner tool. Nut breaker in the back. Another puller tool here. Scratch owl, again, just some picks. Uh, moving down, this is kind of a hodgepodge drawer. So in this, in the bag here, I just because I don't have any other place to put it, are my non-marring pry bars. And then down here are my uh, Allen keys. So I've got a bunch of these T-handle Allens and some of these other Allen T sets here. I think my metric set is currently inside the house. And then I've got one dead blow hammer that's a little bit larger that doesn't fit in my hammer drawer. So that kind of gets stuck in here. And then I've got the rest of my Allen keys. And then I've got my quick set emergency door release key is in here. Just an extra one of those. I keep a handful of those around the house. All right, so my next drawer down, I've got a few of the auto, especially automotive tools. First thing in here is my gear wrench serpentine belt tool set. And then I've got a couple uh, McPherson strut removal tools here. I've got a pair of those. Uh, sensor sockets, removing like an O2 sensor, for example. And then this is my uh, compression tester. It's, it's labeled Craftsman, but I believe this is made by Midivac. These are the tools that, you know, you don't need very often, but when you need them, you obviously need them. The gear wrench serpentine tool set is one that easily uh, can be used with a few other of their pass-through sockets. All right, so on to the other big box. What I've got here, let's see, where do we want to start? We will start over here on the left, and then we'll work our way up. So on the top drawer here, we've got metric wrenches all the way up to 32 and down all the way to seven millimeter. I also have a set of flare nut wrenches. These are all the Craftsman Made in USA raised panel wrenches. They work fine. Okay, so one oddball on here, I've got a 10 millimeter in six point and 12 point. Probably my only really odd metric wrench. Then going down, if you, that was metric, then you can guess the next one is standard. So in the standard size here, I've got this all the way from a uh, quarter inch for my littlest one in the back, all the way up to one and five sixteenths. And it gets even bigger than that with the double open end that goes all, all the way up to inch and a half. Those are useful for dealing with uh, some water pipe fittings every now and then uh, for inside the house. Flare nut wrenches over here on the side, goes all the way up to seven eighths of an inch. And then this is one of my favorite wrenches over here. Guess what this is? This is a bottle opener, pretty big open bottles. Other ones here, a side terminal battery tool wrench. So that's just an easy ratcheting wrench there for removing side battery terminals. And then I've got my VIM set of E-Torx wrenches. Uh, if you work on SOBs at all, or some other European cars having those E-Torx are essential. Next drawer down are my ratcheting wrenches and some other specialty ones here. So I've got standard and metric ratcheting wrenches, and I've got these little small stubby ratcheting wrenches. Uh, my crow's feet wrenches, these are on magnetic tool racks here, as well as my one of my favorite little oddball tools, the Snap-on FZ1 or FZ2. It's basically a right angle adapter for a socket. I keep those with my ratcheting, I'm sorry, with my crow's feet wrenches, because that's the best place to use them. Then I've got my Snap-on adjustable crow's foot wrench, because that's definitely another get out of jail tool if you can't find the right wrench you need. Otherwise, another specialty tool in here is just a GM fan clutch removal tool um, for Chevy Trailblazer, GM 97, or I'm sorry, Saab 97X or otherwise. Uh, and then I've got the adjustable crescent wrench there. 
And then I've got my stubby wrenches over here, or I guess as they call midget wrenches. So this goes all the way down to four, four and a half, up to 10 millimeters. And then I've got a similar set here in standard. Uh, strap wrench, other little small specialty wrenches for routers, die grinders, whatever else are in here. One other tool buried in here that has gotten basically no love because I think it's basically garbage is the Easy Red Extended Reach Scraper. I've tried to use this a few times and it's just pretty flimsy with the gauge of the metal here and the quality of the handle. And so that, that gets tucked away in there, kind of out of sight, out of mind. It's unfortunately, like I had a lot of hope for that tool being good, but I think it's kind of a piece of garbage. Moving on, next drawer, this is where I keep all my lithium ion power tools. So the set that I've got are the older 18 volt Porter cable tools. I've got another video on that plan going through these. They've been out of production for a while. They've served me well. I'd say they've been okay. Uh, newer tools definitely deliver more. My biggest dissatisfaction is the way Stanley Black & Decker handled the 18 volt to 20 volt transition, the rebranding of everything as 20 volt max, and the discontinuation of these batteries, because there's nothing wrong with the batteries. It was really just uh, the way that Stanley Black & Decker handled the transition, because the impact drivers and everything else, everything works fine. There's some great tools in here. It's a topic for another video, but those are my battery tools. Moving on to the next drawer down. These are other uh, oddball tools. So I've got an area light, a little small shop vac, uh, my circular saw, uh, angle grinder, uh, ha uh, uh, electric hand plane. Uh, I think that's about it down here. Some other small vacuum hoses. Again, uh, just some more power tools. Thanks for watching. This wraps up part two of the Toolbox Tour. We're going to keep going on to part three. I'll put a link up in the corner in the cards and in the description below, and a full playlist also in the description. Let's go to part three, and I'll see you there soon.